वेलकम टू बिल्ड फॉर भारत वेर यू एंड आई लर्न फ्रॉम द बिल्डर्स एंड मेकर्स फॉर भारत आई एम योर होस्ट संजय जैन टूडे आई हैव विद मी निखिल कुमार हु इज द को फाउंडर एट सेतु निखिल वेलकम टू द पॉडकास्ट हाई संजय इट्स सच अ प्लेजर टू बी हियर निखिल वी हैव नोन ईच अदर फॉर मेनी इयर्स एंड इन द अर्ली डेज वी वर्क टूगेदर ऑन यूपीआई you played a very critical role in the upi ecosystem by bringing up the bheem app in a very short period of time what i want to focus on today is how that particular application helped to kick start the entire upi ecosystem sanjay as you know you know in the early days of upi when we started working on it a lot many times you know when a platform is coming to life in the initial days users and even ecosystem participants don't actually know what the power of the platform is i remember when we used to go and talk about upi to many companies and banks people would tell us hey there is imps why do we need something like upi so it was very important for you know the ecosystem to understand the power of upi you know as timing as it you know when we started demonetization happened in the month of november 2016 suddenly digital payments became a focus area for everybody around us because there was no cash we were not able to send money to each other we were not able to buy things and so on and at that time you know we were ready in india with the upi infrastructure these are days when we were just doing thousands of transactions a day and not more than that there were very very few users on the platform maybe less than 100000 users at this time when when this opportunity arised we, there was a big debate about what should be the app that you know the government should promote for everybody to use and uh, we took a call at that time that you know maybe we should build something from scratch to show how upi actually works and at that time i remember a mental model was just like how google uses pixel phones as the hardware to showcase the best of android whenever a new a new android os comes out we thought about bheem in in the same parlance saying that you know why don't we use this opportunity to showcase the best of upi now what ended up happening as we built bheem in those 3 weeks and launched is npci which is actually the network generally networks don't build applications applications is the domain of the members who participate in the network but npci which was a network for the first time also built bheem and positioned this as an app as a service to all its members and because we did that we basically became a member of the ecosystem what this meant is we had data about how all the members in the network were participating for example we npci before bheem was not getting data about what are the errors what were the top problems each of these apps or banks were facing and most of this information was second handed in the sense that a bank had to report this data so for example if someone like phone pay was using the upi rails to build a payments application phone pay had to share failure data with the bank and the bank had to share this with npci and by the time we would have this information there would be a big lag before you were able to fix and you know improve the success rates of the system success rates play such a important role as you know in the payments ecosystem it is what drives trust to end consumers so we decided to basically use bheem to strategically improve success rates of the whole network because there was an application built by the network it participated as a member we had real time information and using open source tools like grafana kafka and many other data analytics platforms we were essentially able to get real time information on how the system was performing and we used this information systematically by sharing this with relevant stakeholders for example people in the bank people at you know npci who then used this data to improve the success rates of upi 
in the coming months of January, February and March of 2017. I remember we did this project with SBI under the leadership of then chairman Arundhati Bhattacharya. We call this tiger project as 8 to 80 percent for the listeners who are listening in. There was a point in time when the success rate of the system was less than 10 percent and hovering around 8 percent. And we use data in real time to basically make changes, debug problems in the banking system and improve them every day. So that by the end of March 2017, the entire network was fairly stable and users had built inherent trust with the network by using it through many other applications. Nikhil, this is extremely important. I want to quickly identify the points that you made. One was that NPCI had just launched Bheem UPI. And as a system, it was very nascent. The number of transactions was very small. With demonetization, there was a need to quickly ramp up the system. An app was required that could be trusted by everyone, particularly by the government to promote digital payments. And so which is where Bheem, the app, came into being. The second part was that as a reference app, it actually allowed NPCI to have access to end-to-end -end data and as a result, quickly iterate and improve the underlying systems. The same was also true with the banks because now you are able to drive transactions by working with the bank's success rates up to a point where they become really useful to users. We clearly know that the higher the success rates, the more the behavior change can happen. And so overall, what I'm hearing from you is that for any new system to come up with underlying rails, a reference application is very useful to just improve the system itself. The third was to serve as a demonstration as to how such applications can be built and where new features can continuously be tried. Overall, this tells me how important Bheem is to this entire UPI ecosystem. Absolutely, Sanjay. Till today, Bheem continues to be the reference app for any new feature that comes on UPI. NPCI manages Bheem today and any new advancements that happen on the UPI protocol brings, you know, the first set of features actually come alive on Beam because, you know, NPCI is now not dependent on third parties to be able to implement this, but they have control to be able to test this features with their end users and fix them before it is rolled out to a larger set of members in the network. Another point that I want to add on the two points that you made, Sanjay, is, you know, when platforms are built, Platforms are ex could be extremely complex at the back end. I remember when we were talking about UPI to many people, they would scratch their heads and say, hey, how many people are in this network? Why are there so many people? Why is this happening from point A, point B, and so on? And it is important for any platform to simplify the entire platform through apps. That's the whole idea, right, for end users. And I think Beam played that role extremely well with policymakers, with regulators, with even the banking ecosystem to showcase that how UPI can actually simplify the end user's life so much, even though it was extremely complex the way it works at the back end. I'm reminded of this saying I learned in my first job at Tally where, you know, Bharat Goenka quoted his father saying, we should absorb all the complexity and make life, you know, simple for the end users. And I think Beam was a testament, uh, you know, a great example of something like that that happened in the digital payment space. Great. Thank you, Nikhil. I think you're right. Beam did exactly that. It made payments simple and easy to understand for the users, as well as for everyone else in the ecosystem. And that is a testament to how it was built. That strong foundation has enabled such a massive transaction volume today. Thank you for all the work that you have done on this. And thanks for being on the podcast. Thank you so much, Sanjay. Looking forward to build more stuff with you and also to talk to you soon. Great, Nikhil. Thanks. Thank you for tuning in. This has been another episode of Build for Bharat, where we feature bite-sized discussions with the architects who are building India's inclusive digital future. Build for Bharat is a part of the Bharat Inclusion Initiative, where we support entrepreneurs who are building for Bharat with inclusive products. We are on the web, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Do write to us with your suggestions and requests to feature a guest or a topic. 
Built for Bharat is available on all major podcast platforms. Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcast fix from. We will be back again with more insights soon. Subscribe now to never miss an episode.